Okay, welcome back to the special edition CUBE broadcast. This is September 12th, 2012. This is SiliconANGLE.TV. We're live uh, here in Silicon Valley, California for a special broadcast here at the Brocade Technology Analyst Day for SiliconANGLE.com and Wikibon.org. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE.com. I'm here with Wikibon.org senior analyst Stu Miniman. And uh, what a great day, Stu, on September 12th. Um, a lot of stuff happening on the web today. Obviously the iPhone 5 dominates the news 100% across the board. There's some other you know, flare ups here. You see all the PR firms putting out all their negative news today. We saw Charlie Cheever step down from Quora, big news there. Facebook guy just, I think, was summarily dismissed by the VCs. Why they slipped that news in on today if the iPhone is critical. Um, but a lot going on in tech, Stu. So, Quick rundown, the iPhone 5 dominates the news, SiliconANGLE just wrapped up a two-day broadcast on SiliconANGLE TV channel two. Uh, we are second channel, we're now expanding, so Jeff Kelly with Wikibon and Jeff Frick of SiliconANGLE, we're in Las Vegas, Nevada to, for the Splunk conference, and we have that all on youtube.com slash SiliconANGLE. Um, so go, go check out all the video footage. That's seven hours of materials to do on, on, uh, on that event there. And uh, today's coverage we've had at Brocade, Obviously, huge news in the networking world. We heard from a variety of people today. Our most recent guest, someone in the trench, is hosting huge clouds saying the shackles are coming off with networking, finally. That's really the main story in the market today. Um, and I want to get your take on that in a minute. Um, and then obviously, software, software defined everything. Software defined infrastructure is the big rage. So, big news, the iPhone 5, and the big, and big story there is bigger screen, LTE networking, a lot of great stuff, certainly an upgrade, and for all the pundits out there that are saying it's a total yawn, they really don't know what they're talking about. This is an across the board upgrade for the iPhone 5, um, definitely worth purchasing, and I think that's big news, so obviously, uh, great stuff there. Stu, I want to get your opinion on Brocade, uh, Brocade Technology Day, um, what do you think? So, so John, it's interesting, it's, it's a different Brocade than I grew up with. So when you, when you look at this market, uh, as we talked with you know, Mike Clayco, some of his executive team, you know, Brocade you know, is known as a storage company. Uh, and you know, four years ago, they made the Foundry acquisition. They caught a lot of flack for it. So people said, was it the right acquisition? You know, they, they've got a highly profitable market that they dominate, and the Ethernet market is, is much more competitive. Cisco dominated it for the last 15 years, and there's some other big players in there. Then there were the acquisitions of uh, you know, big guys like HP buying 3Com, IBM buying BNT, Dell buying Force 10, and you know, is there a place in the market for Brocade? What do we learn today? You know, Brocade has good technology, and they're finding their place in the market. So, uh, you know, a we, competitive we market. Competitive market, very competitive market, and as we said, you know, we didn't talk about storage and fiber channel. It was Ethernet. Ethernet fabric is one that you know, Brocade led early with the marketing, and yes, there's competition out there from the likes of you know, Cisco and Juniper, but you know, we talked to some of, uh, some of those early adopter, innovative customers, the service providers, uh, you know, Internet 2 really helping drive you know, the tip of the spear in next generation development of the Internet. I mean, some really cool technology usage, and they're finding Brocade's got great technology, distributed systems, software base, but with the hardware underneath it that, that just works, it's reliable, yeah. all the things that Brocade was known and trusted for on the storage side are getting translated into specific segments of the market where Brocade can get a foothold in that highly competitive market. You know, Stu, we had um, some great guests here at Brocade, we had a big day, innovation day, you know, this is all going on during the iPhone 5. Actually, I felt really good to be here today because the iPhone 5 is so overstimulating and so much noise out there. I mean, I just can't believe the garbage that's being pumped in by all these bloggers. You know, it's a very simple story, but it's, you know, it's certainly very relevant. Um, but Brocade, I thought, was a great day. We had Mike uh, Clayco on today, CEO, who I thought was awesome. And you know, I know he's stepping down as CEO, and, and the specifics behind that aren't yet disclosed in terms of that's happening. New CEO's not yet he'd been identified, so he's still going to be around. Um, he's made some really good investments, so I think if you look back at his record um, and as CEO of Brocade, you know, they've talked about the investments they've made, Stu. They made, essentially, a pivot, um, a term that's used not only a turnaround, but a shift in a right way, and they made some investments, and they were all good calls. And like we heard, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, it's very competitive space. They made the good call on the standards, and certainly with software virtualization and network virtualization, good call there, so I'm very, very impressed with that. And just an overall great guy, 
CEO caliber, tech athlete, but a great guy who knows his tech stuff. Um, we also had Jason Nolet, Nolet on, VP, he's awesome. Call him the senator here at Brocade. Uh, Well-dressed, articulate, knows the space cold, the data center is very competent area for him. These guys are kicking it there. And then finally we had uh, the CTO on, uh, who, again, very, very solid management team. Um, what, what's your assessment of the, of the executives this, today? Yeah, so, so John, you know, they've got smart people, you know, but Brocade has good talent. A lot of them they brought in through the acquisition, so I mean, I worked with Brocade. They've got, you know, they'll, you know, Nishan and CNT and Inrage, uh, you know, WAN solutions, um, you know, the data center, they, you know, really just have, you know, a solid bench of, of networking talent. Um, you know, there's been some ebb and flow over the couple of years, but the, you know, they've got a solid management team. They understand the market, they understand the trends. As we said, you know, software-defined networking, open flow, open stack, all the hot topics, you know, they've got a position here and, you know, you know, can argue that they've got a leadership position or at least kind of trying to drive innovation in those spaces. So Brocade's not sitting back and, and uh, waiting for the market. As, as you stated before, you know, Brocade is really trying to get to where they think the puck will be and, and that's well, what they've they got to they, do. They as, are as where the puck is going, as so as they're in a good spot. We talked about that today, but I really want to get your kind of the futuristic perspective, because you are an analyst, you know the space cold, you know the fiber channel, you know what's going on in networking, you know the convergence, you know the software-led infrastructure space that, we're, that you're going to be putting out some new research on. But I want to ask you one specific question to Brocade in summary. What do you think they need to do right now? Obviously they've made some good calls, they're in a good strategic position. We heard that today. Stu, what do you think they need, what do they need to do to be successful from this point forward? Yeah, it's a great question, John. So, uh, you know, Brocade, one of the challenges, you know, I think the service providers, they think can help them go to market. Because as we said, they have some partnerships, but traditionally it was an OEM go to market. So you know, HP and EMC a lot of times made up 50% of the revenue that they were doing in Fiber Channel. And that's all well and good, but they don't have necessarily the same partnerships on the, on the Ethernet side. So if they're going to fight against the likes of you know, Cisco and their giant channel um, against you know, Juniper, Arista, and the HPs and Dells of the world. Um, you know, where are the technology partners? How are they baking themselves into solutions? And you know, they're doing it leading with technology. Um, and the marketing um, is, is interesting. So uh, Brocade CMO actually wasn't at this event. Uh, he's had a whole uh, you know, initiative around the data center is here. And to be honest, I'm not sure that it's resonating yet. So you know, technology solid. Um, you know, how do they position themselves to be more strategic to you know, the CIOs and the C-suite in the environment, and that, that's the biggest gap I see from you know, I think Wall Street really did not recognize them with um, a lot of stock bump today. They, tra they had heavy trading, um, but really just it was five cents up on the news today, but on heavy volume. So to me, heavy volume means there's going to be an inflection point in the stock. That's just my uh, kind of technical analysis of the charts as I looked at them quickly today. Um, so I'm expecting either an, an up or down movement in the stock based on the heavy trading. Personally, I think Wall Street has no clue of what's going on in this area. I think this is going to be one of those things where a bunch of people are going to get it right and some are going to get it wrong. It's pretty much a coin flip. Yep. You know, Facebook was the same thing with Facebook, and it's an emerging area, yeah, so, not so, a lot of data out there. So John, you know, interesting point. That, you know, there are a bunch of the financial analysts here, and I talked to a couple of them, and one of the things, there was good announcements today, to be honest, there were no surprises. Everything that they announced today were ones that they had been talking about for the last two years. So they're meeting what they said, they're delivering it, and some of the financial guys said, actually they're six months late on when they said they were going to do it, and when it comes to upgrade cycles and deliveries of product, okay. you know, that's what the, 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 the Wall Street yeah, guys Stu, are looking Stu, at. Here's my problem with Wall Street. Okay, I mean, this, is, this is to everyone on Wall Street right now. This is my problem with you. You don't know what you're talking about. You, you will penalize Brocade for being late, on something you know nothing about. So they missed their milestone, but they're well ahead of the market, they're in a good spot. So my big problem with Wall Street is that they make all these decisions on quote track record and they try to police these companies that are developing emerging technologies. In a mature market, okay, I get that. Growth on their fiber channels up. So okay, you really, you know, they're good there. But Wall Street always gets it wrong in emerging markets. And the best analysts on Wall Street, the ones that really know their stuff, 
the ones that do get it, make the right calls based upon where the trend data is going. Yep. So that's my only complaint on Wall Street. Uh, and I think, and, and you know, John, ultimately... on the technology, I absolutely agree with you, but remember, you know, we're talking about the Ethernet market here. Ethernet <laughs> is a relatively stable market. You know, SDN yeah. is not taking over the market anytime soon. If we're talking about Ethernet ports, year over year, you know, Brookade's flat. So, you know, yeah, they, 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 they're, they're using their technology to help gain businesses and gain relationships, so, you know, you know Ethernet is Ethernet. Stu, you're from, I'm from the East Coast, you live in the East Coast, you're just trying to align with Wall Street. <laughs> Oh, my, my, my point exactly. Um, great news today, so if, if in case you missed it, Brocade announced the fabric and then uh, you know, there's some other smaller news like the iPhone 5 out there. So the top story today is Brocade software fabric uh, on SiliconANGLE, and oh by the way, Stu, did you hear? Apple announced the iPhone 5. An iPhone? Yeah, so a new uh, iPhone How many are you there. ordering? <laughs> I'm definitely going to upgrade, no problem with that. Um, great, great story today here at Brocade, great story with Apple. I think what Apple's showing is the new future. Um, we're excited, also excited to say we had a very successful cube of seven hours of coverage uh, in Las Vegas with Splunk. Splunk is now public and got all that captured and documented. This is a great day, Stu, thank you very much. Thanks to hey. Mark Hopkins and uh, Mike Jones out there on the board and all the guests back at, uh, at all of the folks back at, at siliconangle.com and Wikibon for getting the blog posts up and getting the videos up on YouTube. If you want to see the videos from today and from Splunk Conference, go to youtube.com slash siliconangle. All the videos are up there. So, yeah, that's John, we you know, just want to say once again, you know, thanks to our hosts here at Brocade. You know, appreciate all the support from the comms team uh, for bringing us in here, showing innovation in, in, to, to bring the cube in to really bring the real story of their customers to uh, the community. And you know, we've got a lot of shows coming up here uh, through the rest of the fall. Oracle Open World's right around the corner. Uh, lots of big data with the Hadoop Strata Conference, IBM IOD, yeah. uh, and uh, you know, lot, lots of places where yeah, the, the cube's going to help bring uh, you know information about all the new innovation and trends. Do. Couldn't have said it better myself, the cube is expanding. Look for more cubes out there from siliconangle.tv. Also, stay tuned because you're going to start to see siliconangle.tv 24-7. We're getting that going, getting the bumps out of the system. But as of now, we're going to be continuing to go out to the events. This is siliconangle.tv's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. This is John Furrier with Stu Miniman. We'll see you in the next cube. Take care. <laughs>